Okay. Now we can do this impulse drill with or without a speeder board. I'm going to do it without the speeder board first and then I'll demonstrate it using a speeder board. What we're going to do, we're going to use the reflex of coughing or if you prefer spitting to develop our impulse. All right. So what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is relax. All right. So I'm going to backtrack here a little bit as we get into doing this impulse drill together. In order to do something in an accelerated way and to accelerate your mass, you have to be very relaxed. To the extent that you don't relax, you're going to slow yourself down. It's kind of like putting, driving with two legs, with one leg on the accelerator, one foot on the accelerator, and the other foot on the brake. Right? You can accelerate, but you're limited in how fast you're going to be able to accelerate because you got one foot on the brake. So the first thing you need to really do is relax. There's some other really important components to good manipulative skills, such as developing good tissue sense, knowing when you've taken the patient to where they need to be, on the so-called lockout. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Uh, and also being able to get the patient to relax in timing. But this is related, what we're learning now, what we're going to practice now, is just related to this drill of developing this impulse. Right? So you need to be able to relax your hands. Right? By that I mean, Byron, can you come here for one second? When you guys, step up here for a moment, when you guys uh, are doing a reflex, you'll see this in, in, in practice sometimes, and, and Byron kind of knows that I want him to give me the weight of his arm. Right? And he is. I can feel it. He's not holding his arm up. But sometimes you'll grab a patient's arm and they won't let it go. They're not relaxed. They're, they're engaging their shoulder girdle and upper extremity musculature and, core, and trunk musculature to hold it up and they'll let it go. Now I've got the weight again. Thank you, Byron. Go back and sit down. So that's what I mean by relaxing. You really need to kind of let yourself completely go in order to get that impulse out. Now, we're going to start with just a plain old run-of-the-mill impulse. We're not going to worry about vectors, direction, or anything. And then once we do that, then we'll be able to actually add a little bit of direction to our impulse. So the way we start this is to get in a nice, comfortable stance. Your feet are about maybe shoulder distance apart. Knees are bent. You're letting your abdomen relax because you want your diaphragm to be able to contract. A little bit of an anterior tilt. Hands are relaxed, nice and loose, and then you're just going to let that impulse come out of you. All right. Again, you're loose, you're letting your arms relax, your shoulders are relaxed, and it's nice and loose. Back, remember to remind yourself to stay loose. All right. Very comfortable, loose, relaxed, and so let's everybody get up, make sure you face in so we're not getting any bodily fluids on each other, right? Everybody stand up. One, relax, two, three, kind of let yourself go loose in between, nice and loose in between. One, two, Three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, now we've just been having thinking about the direction we're impulsing. I bet everybody was impulsing away a little bit. Am I right? Everyone impulsing out a little bit? Let's do let's bring the impulse in, right? So it's the same thing, but now you're just gonna let as you impulse, you're going to let that impulse come towards you. So first get nice and comfortable and loose. One, two, three. <laughs> Remember, watch the hands. Make sure you don't have that large excursion. One, two, three. <laughs> Pull it in. One, relax in between. Regroup. Get yourself to relax. One, two, three. <laughs> One, two, three, one, two, three, 
Okay, now we're going to pretend, we're going to simulate we're doing a cervical, right? So here's our, we've got our hands on our patient's cervical spine. Let's say this is going to be a right lateral flexion, left rotation break, right? Right? So you're comfortable, you're loose, you're right there, and you're just, you're just going to let your hands explode in that direction. One, two, three. <laughs> One, remember it's a break, not a rotary, you're just going to let it happen. One, two, three. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> now we're going to do left lateral flexion, right rotation. Okay? So just set it up the other way. Get an easier bent. Abdomen's relaxed. A little bit of an anterior tilt. Let's get those hands in front of you. All right? Watch what you're doing. Let you make sure those wrists are relaxed, shoulders relaxed. You're not holding any tension. One, two, three. Pop. One, two, three. Pop. One, two, three. Pop. Okay, everyone relax and just shake it out. By making a contact on the table just like this, taking my hands, overlapping, if possible, always try and come to the edge because if you do this in the middle of a table, you could en end up extending your wrist too much and hurting yourself. So just come over to the edge, set it high enough so you can lean into it a bit, and I want you to lower your mass into the drop instead of using your arms. Notice my hip dropping down. and I'm not using my arms at all. My arms are just becoming a conduit for me to lower my mass through them to get the table to release. And that's an excellent force generator using a mechanical assist. So let's work around the tables, right? Find some tables. I can consciously kind of come in here like this, right? And I can just make it release. Or, I can take my speeder board, can hold it either way, right? Keep it loose, just make a nice broad contact on it, right? And I can not even think about making it release, right? Again, I'm not trying to make it release. I'm just putting my hand there, holding them kind of lightly together, and then and then impulsing to make the thing release. All right. Remember to set it light when you practice this, otherwise it won't release with just the impulse. All right? So nice and loose. You're not actually trying to make it close. The impulse will do it for you. So that's another nice thing you can do with your speeder board. Okay. The next, the next drill is uh, body drop number two. Now I'm going to use I'm going to use a cross bilateral pisiform to demonstrate this. It's not to demonstrate the adjustment, it's just to demonstrate the actual drill, right? So you can do this on a patient, you need a, a platform about this high, or you can do this on a, uh, uh, a bolster or a pillow, something that would simulate the consistency of a patient. It's best actually to do it on a patient, but it looks like this. Is it okay to open that up? Yep. All right, I'll tuck this in here. It's a cross bilateral contact, and I want you to pay attention to the position of this hip. All right, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer my weight from my legs, all the weights on my legs now, I'm going to transfer the weight from my legs to my arms. All right, so as I lean in, I transfer my weight, and once I have 50, 75, 80% of my weight there, right, I let my hips lower, and there's the body drop, right? So you're not, again, again, you're not using your arms to create this delivery. You're letting this movement, if you watch my left hip, come down and give that force generation for you. Again, it's mass times acceleration. 
So you transfer the weight, you doing okay? Yep. And then just drop it down like that. So let's break out and practice that drill on each other. Body drop number two. Thank you very much.